cool. Are you staying here? Yeah, I'll just yeah. have a minute. Oh. I'm here to heckle. I'm not leaving. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> you guys shout. You're a healthy young man. Maybe. You're a healthy young man. You can shout. Um, so, Catalyst is obviously a web framework. I like to call it What's the web? What's the web? It's, uh, I like, it's more, I like to call it more of a glue. It's, you can put it right on top of an existing application with a web interface. So, uh, recently as of 5.8, which is actually kind of old now, uh, we rewrote it with Moose. Uh, so you get native roles and uh, everything that Moose could do. Uh, it's based off a model view controller paradigm. And uh, obviously models are for your data, views are for your data. It's presented as and controllers kind of tie together. Uh, it's kind of the status quo of the web right now. But uh, it's, a, it's, a neat little, it's a neat little way to get your data organized. Um, it's pluggable and modularized, which uh, at this point means, I guess, you know, you have plugins and you have components and everything from different types of models, views, controllers. Uh, Make sure it's not to original. I think originally I put it modularized and as a bag there, I thought, well, it's funny. We are following the model view controller design. Uh, Plugin is kind of originally you would just write an extension and call it a plugin, necessarily. But with the model view controller, uh, you call things components as opposed to, not everything's going to be a plugin. Plugins typically go straight into the controller or the application. But, Depending on what it's used for, you probably want to separate it out of that it's for how your data is going to look. Yeah, and typically, even then, if it's dealing with Catalyst, then you want to make it a, a component of Catalyst. Otherwise, you want to, you know, if it's dealing with your database, you probably actually just want to separate it out entirely. Have, when I say glue, I want to have just enough code that Catalyst can talk to that data. So, you uh, still obviously have each individual component or plugin for Catalyst. The plugins are still widely used for Catalyst. There's a lot of. Uh, as you'll see, there's a whole bunch of plugins that are just used. Yeah, we're good. We're over. Um, it's been adopted by a lot of big businesses. Um, Omni Hotels makes a lot of money annually. Uh, BBC iPlayer is one of the big ones. They kind of uh, brought it into the, the big corporation. Uh, and Uporn. Uh, Uporn is an avid user of Catalyst. Uh, they, have, they get a lot of traffic, obviously. Um, Task Catalyst is a nice little uh, bundle. Yeah, it's a bundle of all the modules. That, uh, it's, okay, it's a, it's, it's a bundle of tasks. We'll go with that. Uh, it, uh, it grabs everything you probably want with uh, your Catalyst distribution as far as uh, development, um, models, views, and controllers. Um, this is a screenshot of, uh, I, I think that's everything in it. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, Catalyst Devel is where all your uh, development tools come in. You get a uh, easy. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, dev server. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a lot like Ruby on Rails. To start a Ruby on Rails application, you get the quick little uh, dev server right there. Uh, Catalyst Manual, which is all your documentation. Obviously, that's really nice. Catalyst Model Adapter, which is really cool. Uh, that goes into the kind of glue concept I was talking about, where you already have a pre existing app and you want to connect your Catalyst model to it, but you don't want to write any code. It's, it's literally one line of like configuration code, and then you have. 
uh, accessors to your uh, model. Uh, DBIC schema is a big one. Um, anybody who uses DBIX class, Catalyst uses that. Yeah, and pretty much everyone that uses Catalyst uses that. Um, Catalyst View TT is your template toolkit uh, view. Uh, Catalyst View Email, which I'm a maintainer of, is for sending emails, and it's it works. It's maybe not necessarily in the right place for uh, Model View Controller, but emails really tough to fit in that paradigm. Uh, yeah, it's just a pain in the ass in general. Uh, controller Action Role. Um, Catalyst, start, uh, Catalyst, I don't know what version it started with, but it, it, it uses uh, this uh, method, um, no, not method modifiers, they're uh, attributes, there we go. And, uh, so you, you uh, can actually define roles per action uh, via does, I believe. Uh, controller uh, or set, Catalyst X simple login uses these extensively for all sorts of stuff from like you can require a login per action, you can require, uh, I believe there's one for SSL, you can require SSL per action. Um, all, all sort of anything you can imagine like that, you can write it uh, and just add on a quick little does attribute. Um, Catalyst component traits is basically roles per component. It's basically uh, easy easy roles per component. Uh, loose roles is the best way to put that. Catalyst X simple login is uh, an entire uh, login system. Uh, you, just, you literally just put uh, Catalyst X simple login in your plugin list and uh, you have you have an entire setup, uh, URL setup. Uh, I think there's a, I don't think there's a user login action, but you get login or u user addition action, but you get login uh, authentication, um, which is really cool because you, you don't have to write any authentication logic. It's it's a really cool little module. You get it gives you a full screen um, of everything you need for each each action. Catalyst Action Rest, which is part of the, actually Catalyst, yeah, Catalyst Action Rest is a Rest um, protocol for your, your application, and uh, it's per per action, which is uh, the URL endpoint of your uh, Catalyst app. So you get post, put, delete. Um, in addition to HTTP requests. So it's, on top of that, it does serialization with JSON, XML, I think there's SOAP, there's, there's a whole bunch. And it does it all automatically, you just have to specify what you want. Uh, instance for context is uh, basically um, giving you your catalyst object per request. And uh, it allows you, when you're writing a model, you run into things, uh, you run into not having your catalyst context object, uh, which is uh, bad sometimes. Sometimes you want to get a hold of the session or you want to get a hold of other things that are uh, built into that catalyst object. Right, but sometimes you want to. Right. Or sometimes you want. Uh, a new instance for context. A perfect example, well, instance per request. A good example of that is uh, right now, but uh, session support is pretty uh, thorough. You have, uh, you, you, again, it's separated into state and store. Uh, so you have your cookie state, which allows you to maintain, maintain state for your session. Uh, you get uh, there's multiple states. Uh, cookie is the most widely used one since that's most widely used on the web. Uh, Berkeley DB for stores, DBIC, you can write any store you want really. Uh, it's a really good API. Uh, authentication and authorization are on the same plane as session as far as the API goes. Uh, it's broken down into stores and credentials and um, that sort of thing. 
big stores for that are DBX Class again. If you're using a DBX Class model, it makes sense to use DBX Class store. Uh, credentials are really cool because if you write an HTTP, HTTP credential, you can use it uh, pretty much as seamless as you could your DBIX class, or you could use it with your DBIX class store really seamlessly. Is that where you go out to another server to uh, It can be. Uh, actually, that's how the Twitter and O, well, the O, the OAuth, what? Uh, that's how OAuth works? That's how the OAuth uh, credential works for Catalyst. Um, and it's really cool because you use it, it's all the same API, it's all, um, it's abstracted away, so you just make the authenticate call, and it takes care of it all for you um, behind the scenes. It's it's yeah, it's pretty involved. Um, there were, I think Facebook class does that too, but Facebook's API is changing so much that it's really hard to keep a steady API for that. Um, but that's yeah, that's what's really cool about credentials is you can write a credential, and if it needs to make a you know RPC call like that. Uh, or, you know, an external call like that, then it, it can do it behind the scenes and you really don't have to screw with uh, doing it by yourself. Um, ACLs are pretty cool because you, again, that's per action granularity. You can do uh, access control lists per user, per, you know, it's, it's actually access control list for your app, which is just, you know, that's a, I think that says a lot. Um, as far as authentication goes. Uh, there's a quick list of recommended plugins. Um, Static Simple is really nice for uh, development. If you're serving HTML pages, you don't have to deal with configuring your Nginx server with light HTTP. Uh, it just serves the file up. It's, it's not worried about performance because it's development. Uh, Unicode's obviously a pain in the ass, so it's nice to have something take care of that. Um, Internationalization is another really big used one. Uh, I think someone in this room gave a thought about internationalization. Yeah. Yes, you. Jeff. Jeff can tell us all about internationalization. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, for the last place I, last place I worked at, I wrote a Catalyst staff to do the internationalization report. So. Yeah. So you know how much the pain of an asset is. Yeah. Uh, how useful a, a plugin can be for that. Uh, config loader is really cool too. Uh, basically, you throw any config format at it and it, it works. It's, it's really flexible. Yeah, yeah it's extremely flexible. Uh, you get your basic testing API, uh, debugging, uh, test www mechanized catalyst is does the job. It's it's not necessarily maintained as I'd like to see it, but. Um, you can get some pretty good tests out of it. Uh, Stack Trace is nice because you can get a pretty, uh, you can get a fairly organized um, trace out of your app. And with with Moose brought in, those can get pretty hefty pretty fast. Um, Rebel is really cool because you can step through your app um, really easily, really simply. Um, Leak Checker is nice. Allows you to check for leaks in your app, which are uh, anytime you're using any sort of big data structures, you're going to run into leaks. And anytime your app gets big, you're going to run into leaks. Obviously, so you're going to want to check that out. Profile again, because it kind of goes along with Leak Checker, allows you to. I believe it uses or allows you to use NYT Prof, um, so you can profile your application, see how it's running, see where you can make improvements. Uh, there's a load of deployment options, uh, especially with the advent of Plaque. Um, and local lib is also recommended. And Chris can tell us all about that when we want to know about it. Um, models, we are too sexy for your data. Uh, this is where all your data is taken care of. Uh, you know, you, in the back. Oh, OK, thank you. Uh, here's a list of all your models currently. Um, there's a bunch of them. List. Huh? An incomplete list, probably. That was extremely incomplete. 405,000. There's, oh, there's a lot. Uh, and writing them, you're going to be writing them per app, too. 
So again, DBIC schema, anybody who's really sane, in my opinion, using an OAuth round is using DBIC. Uh, views. Yeah. Don't get me started on RDBO. Um, tons of views. Uh, any, pretty much any templating system out there has view. Um, my favorite is TT, but if you like Mason, that's cool too. The interesting thing about the Mason view is that you can generally and very easily take your existing Mason code and bolt it into your account. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, that's the other thing. Unless you're using it as control on your software itself. Yeah. And then you're doing it okay. Well, if you have a Mason app, then you can just plug it into your catalog stuff as such. It's very quick. Yeah, it's it's really quick. You don't you don't you don't need the whole mod pearl or you know you don't need the existing deployment solution to run a Mason app. You know, kind of, um, view email. We've gone over this. It's a really handy way to set up an email. You just put together a pearl hash, uh, hash ref actually, and uh, forward it to the view, and it takes care of everything. Um, Controllers are where you basically put your URL endpoints, uh, connect your model to your view. So, you know, MVC again, you have your view where things are presented, uh, your model where your business logic is put together. The controllers put those two together. Um, data manager, I want to pimp this out real quick because it's a really nice. Uh, management system, it's a conglomeration of data verifier and message stack. It uses the Moose type system as well as whatever custom validations you want for uh, validating your data. And it's, it's just a very clean, um, solid API, uh, really good for managing and validating your data. Uh, this is a uh, this is Catalyst Control Rest, which I was talking about Catalyst Action Rest earlier. Um, gives you your uh, Rest protocol methods, which is extremely useful for writing uh, cross-platform apps. If you're doing iPhone apps, or if you're doing a, you know if you're on a web interface with a easy easy accessible Ajax uh, JavaScript, and it makes it really nice to do that. Uh, instant serialization with XML and JSON and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, sessions and authentication. We have a session plugin. Uh, loads, of, loads of extensions for that. You can actually even use your uh, pre existing CGI session classes. Just bolt them in there. Um, lots of stores. There's a file store, there's a fast MMAP store. Um, per user, which is kind of cool, as opposed to per browser, so you can actually have different users have different sessions. Um, cookie state, which is really cool, and again, storage out the wazoo. Uh, authentication is really, really cool. Uh, went over this as far as uh, extensions go, you have any, pretty much any, any uh, authentication system that you can think about there can be coerced into using this API because it's it's just it's built to be extensible. It's built to be uh, layered. So, so uh, quick demo. You might want to resize your terminal to hit the screen to let the um, text will um, the uh, the That works. Okay, so... All the translucent terminals suck. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, Plus, you're ruining the RC when I go in the background. The what? You're ruining the RC when I go in the background. I'm doing what? You really need IRC running in the background. Oh, yeah, well, I intentionally made sure that wasn't going. Uh, okay, so. Just to point out, um, the text at the beginning that you just saw was creating a new app using the Yeah, we're just creating a skeleton app. And uh, here we can. So you run one command to get the skeleton of an app that does that. Okay. And no code written. We have, a, we have a working web application. It doesn't do anything yet, but we have a working web. It's very easy to 
And if we want to do, if we want to add a controller, uh, we do this. Now we have. No code wrong. Yeah. Yes, it's generated for you. Right. There you go. Creating a model. Creating a model is just as easy. I was going to show how to do that, but I mean, it's just as easy. It's just uh, actually. All you need to do is doing a DBS model. You need to see your connection info. And the database name. And uh, with, with SQLite, you don't even need. Yeah. You can just, it'll, it'll even create the, uh, it'll just create the uh, SQLite database file for you. So, I mean, you really need very, minute, very, very few things to get an app running. And then you can actually take your DBA, your uh, DBAC schema to the SQL line app and uh, deploy it to MySQL and Postgres uh, without changing anything. Unless you're using, you know, you're not going to be using stored procedures really with SQL line, but uh, get your general general app set up and uh, deploy it to pretty much any mainstream DBS. Uh, yeah, which is a lot. So. Cool. Right. Go and, um, oh, your um, phone is over, actually. So, yeah. Shame on you, man. Dang. Well, yeah, and we were, we were making well, I mean, it's 20, it's supposed to be 40 minutes, but it's, mm. it's a 20 minute talk, but it's a 40 minute talk, but I put it in for 20. Mm. Yeah. So, if you, guys want, well, if you guys have questions. I don't think people are going to mind you continuing until the next talk when it's a start. Yeah. So I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.